Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Okay. Let me know if you can see the presentation. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Right. So our next speaker is Neil Sharon from Tel Aviv University. So his topic for today is approximation of manifold valued functions. So the stage is yours, Neil. All right, thank you very much. So uh, first, I would like to thank uh, both the organizers of the session, uh, Yevanesha and uh, Julian, and also, of course, the organizer of the, this, this workshop. Uh, unfortunately, I have to take it from my office in Tel Aviv, so uh, the time differences uh, make it hard for me to uh, attain all the talks, but uh, uh, it seems like it was 10 years ago, but only one year ago, uh, we all, uh, met uh, uh, in person and uh, I hope that maybe in the next years it will be, it will get back to normal. <clears throat> so after this uh, preface, um, so today I'm going to um, kind of introduce uh, one of my uh, main uh, research uh, branches. Last year I talked about uh, uh, other uh, form of problems that I tackle, which are estimation problems over groups, things that related to electron microscopy and uh, radar studies and stuff like that. And today I'm going to talk about uh, something a bit uh, different. And this is of approximation of manifold value functions. And, and I will start with some um, introduction and then I will uh, hopefully uh, we'll have enough time to talk about two case studies that uh, are ongoing these days uh, in my uh, research group. <clears throat> so uh, just to put everything in place, there's some historical remarks about uh, the field. So, so approximation theory, I I'm sure most of you know uh, some part of the history, maybe more than I do. Uh, but but, but it, it's a very ancient classical uh, field, goes back to the 19th century with names like Bernstein, Chebyshev, Feber, Fayer, and more. Um, back then, polynomials uh, were the primary tools, still very much today, but um, we have many more. And um, I think perhaps the main milestone was uh, in, in this field was the Weierstrass uh, paper which is proof of the density of algebraic polynomials on a closed uh, interval. And uh, since then, uh, there, there were many, many following uh, papers about uh, extending the theory, improving it in a better way, and, and, and constructing uh, uh, such polynomials, for example, what Bergson did. Um, and uh, of course, many other notable work, including like Jackson, which we all know from, from all the inequalities and bounds and, uh, and uh, Markov's and, and Rich, Wernke, Haar, and many more. Okay, so, so, so of course, uh, this is very much history. Um, and and, and from, from there, uh, many natural extensions uh, uh, continued. Um, if it's from a numerical analysis uh, uh, problems such as integration and differentiation and stuff like that, uh, if it's from the computational side or the development of, 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 of theory of splines and, and, and rational approximation and, and, and finite elements and, and all the stuff that we, we still use these days, uh, representation and, and, and it, you can even think about the uh, numerical linear algebra as a natural extension to that. Uh, of course, many of these these topics uh, are, are have large uh, intersection intersection between them, so it's not a distinct uh, um, a classification. Uh, but, but if I have to put, put the finger on on, on where I, where I do my research today is mostly at, at, at this part of uh, contributing uh, to, to the nonlinearity. Uh, we saw some very interesting uh, phenomena in, in, 
and that stuff, and 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 high dimensional methods. Um, so so to put some uh, structure in this uh, jungle of nonlinearity, um, I'm going to focus on on a certain uh, uh, class of problems. Uh, which uh, involve weight manifolds. So here again, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants and there's a very nice quote that uh, you can read. I'm not going to read it out loud, but, um, but, but, but basically it describes very well the, 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 this, this, this manifold stuff. So, so we are talking about, about structures, about spaces that, that are can, can get a very intricate um, a global structure on, on the one hand, and on the other hand, you have um, locally uh, Euclidean space, Euclidean space from a fix with a fixed uh, dimension. And, and, and it's very interesting from, of course, from the geometry point of view, or the differential geometry, the Riemannian structure and all this, so on. Um, but, but also from the algebraic point of view, where we often see in, also in applications, uh, models that include uh, uh, matrix Lie groups. Okay, that this, this, this elements comes from uh, originally from Lie Sophos uh, theory back, back, back then uh, on, on different differential uh, equations and symmetry and Today we are used all over to model rotation, rigid motions, um, and many more. Um, <clears throat> so um, specifically, I'm going to talk about approximation, and I'm going to talk about approximation of a, a certain function that uh, are very unique, I think, and uh, this is the manifold valued function. So. Uh, to put uh, some, uh, to, to make this discussion more concrete, uh, you can look at this definition and you can think about a function that it's defined on the real line. You can think about the real line as uh, time steps or time series. Uh, and, and then you have this, this time series function that gets at, at each point in time, it gets manifold value. So for example, rotation matrix. In each point of time, you have rotation matrix. Or maybe much more geometrically, you can think about the sphere. So at every point of time, you have point on the sphere, it, you basically define a curve. So, so these kind of functions are basically curves or trajectories over, over, the, over the manifold. And what we get is basically samples, time samples of this trajectory. And we would like to, to have the approximation, uh, hopefully intrinsic approximation on the, or, or, or on the manifold, for example, the sphere or, or the matrix uh, space. So, so, so some of the challenges of the, the very straightforward challenges are as follows. Uh, first, uh, if you think about uh, me going to the office and uh, record the timestamps of my path. So I have some kind of, uh, of uh, sampling over the sphere of earth. And um, I would like to take these samples and to approximate the path, the continuous path from my house to the office. So I, I don't want to get, a, for example, a path that goes two or three meters up to the air or goes two or three meters down to, to earth. I want to stay on the surface. So one challenge is this closeness. Okay, so we would like function that, that, that really gets uh, the manifold values. And, and then when you start going down to details, you look for objects that live on manifolds. And, and then you face some other, uh, other challenges such as the lack of uh, commutativity. So most of uh, this manifold, if, 
if for example you consider lim lim groups you have um, you, you have uh, this this oper operation that are well defined but it usually uh, do not satisfy commutativity and and also so what are good what is a good choice for basic object uh, polynomial is is a very good guess in on real functions but uh, what is the polynomial on the manifold how to define it properly and and does it a good choice uh, is it a good choice so 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 basically these are like the the um, starting point and interestingly um, contrary to the evaluation of approximation method on, on, on real functions, start to get polynomials and go, goes uh, on to splines and, and maybe more advanced uh, objects. On, on this uh, sort of, of problems, the, the, the development of, of uh, operators are kind of backwards. So you want to start with things that are simple and simple on manifolds are things that uh, satisfy or respect this, this locality of, 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 the, of the manifold because the manifold is very complicated globally but very simple locally. So you look for operators that are local and which, which usually, if you think about it, they are like the most advanced operators on, on the real line uh, obtaining locality is not easy, we all know it, and, and, and in manifold it's, 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 it's quite essential. So here, here are some uh, visualization of, of these objects. What, what are curves on, on manifold? So on the left side you can see a, a clear geometric example, like a trajectory on the sphere. Uh, on the right, um, interestingly, is a curve on a limit, a ligu. So how can you visualize a, a matrix on Ligo? You think about the elements as operators and you apply them on some kind of object. In this case, we have this uh, teapot. So basically you can think about the teapot standing in some arbitrary point in space and then you hit it with, with, with the group elements. And if you have a smooth curve on the group, what you will get is like a smooth transition of, 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 of this uh, object. In this case, the, the, the dark teapots are, you can think about them as, as the samples that we get. And the white ones are like the ones that we generate to, to be able to imagine the, 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 what the curve look like, looks like. And um, this, uh, this specific uh, figure is from a, a work by uh, Johannes Wollner from uh, Graz, Austria. <clears throat> so uh, our basic uh, tool is, is, is a very um, a unique tool called subdivision schemes. And the main idea in subdivision schemes, again, it's, it's a very, I think, advanced idea in terms of of, of, of tools for approximation, but, but, but uh, it's, it's very natural uh, for the stuff that we do and, and, and you will see it shortly. So in subdivision schemes, instead of thinking about basic uh, bidding blocks, like basic basis uh, functions and, and, and kind of expand maybe uh, uh, the, the approximation using, using uh, some linear combination of basis function, here we are doing differently. What we are doing, we are, we are using refinement. So we take, we take the samples and we gradually refine them into, into sets of denser and denser points. And, and then we look at the limit. So we can do it, for example, on, on curves. Here are like some samples of a curve and we adding more and more points. And, and, and we look at the limit. Uh, actually, in terms of uh, com computationally thinking, 
uh, you don't need to go very, very far after like a few refinements, you have enough points to, to, to understand the limit. Uh, mathematically, of course, this is not the case. You have to, you have to think very, uh, very hard of how to, to, um, to prove that such a limit exists and the properties of the limits. There's, these are the essential uh, questions in this field. And you can see it also on, on, on this polygon or this, this 3D object. Uh, um, and, and by refinement, we, we, we make it from, from piecewise linear into a very smooth and, 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 and lovely object. And, and I think uh, this, this, this very nice uh, uh, object is a good uh, presentation uh, since this tool became very, very common in the uh, animation uh, industry. And uh, I think in the late uh, 90s, uh, the, the first uh, Pixar movie won uh, the Oscar for short animation uh, movie, and they used only subdivision schemes based uh, technology. Uh, it calls uh, Gary's Game. You can see it online today. It's, it's a very nice movie. And, uh, and since then, uh, Pixar, uh, uh, all the other uh, companies followed Pixar and they all used heavily uh, uh, software that are based on, on these, these methods. Um, so um, uh, to take it back to, to the manifold, uh, this is a way we can uh, generate a, a, a smooth uh, curves. In this case, examples of two curves that I that I made over the uh, the group of uh, Euclidean uh, of rigid motion or, or, or over Euclidean space, and um, and 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 now let, let, let's uh, let's speak about uh, about uh, what we're doing today and and about the, the, the case studies that I want to, to show you. So just as a high level. We, we mainly focus uh, today on, 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 on these this four directions. First uh, is, is, is further de uh, developing the analysis tools. So, so you refine, you take points and you add more points and you add more points. What guarantee that in the end you will get some curve of any type and, and, and why this curve must be smooth, if any. Uh, also approximation order and stuff like that. Uh, we, we, we look at, at other more advanced uh, problems. This is, uh, for example, a student of me and uh, Professor Nero Din. I think some of you know her. Uh, and, and in this case, we're doing Hermit approximation over the manifold. So you think about this curve over the manifold, over either a league group or, or some surface or some other uh, object. And, and now you get both sample and the tangent of, of the curve uh, simultaneously. And you ask, how can I incorporate these two very different sort of samples into one, uh, one approximation curve and to really exploit the information as we do in numbers and in, in the classical Hermit uh, calculation. Uh, the, the, the thing that I'm going to, to talk today in the last, in, in the next 10 minutes or so is, is basically multi-resolution analysis. So we're not going to talk about how to generate the, 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 the curves and, 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 and how to really construct the subdivision operators, uh, but we, we're going to talk about how to use them in a very interesting way for a multi-scale uh, representation of objects. And, uh, and also a little bit uh, about, uh, uh, we talked about curve, but, 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 but data in real world uh, sometimes uh, uh, doesn't tend to, to be uh, in a curve. So, so what can you do in scattered data? <clears throat> So here is a case study number one, and, and this is a brief introduction to what we call the pyramid transform. It's a, a brilliant idea, I think, uh, goes back to David Dono in, in the 90s. And, and, and the, the starting point is this, on the upper left corner, you have this, this 
step function that you want to represent. And, and what you have in the end is uh, some kind of interpolation operator and, and, and downsampled operator. So basically you just take, maybe you have this, 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 this step function in some kind of resolution, you take any, any second point and keep it and the other ones fall away. And then you get this, this, this convolved sample here, this, this low resolution, and you can continue going down at the third level, you have something that uh, very remotely resembled the, the initial, uh, um, the initial uh, uh, signal, but, but, but it has very, very uh, few samples there. So what you do basically, you are taking this as, 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 as a first level, you keep it, and using the interpolation, you build the new, the new uh, uh, higher resolution uh, signal. Of course, this one doesn't equal the original one. So you have here what we call the details. And, and, and then the details together with the initial uh, uh, samples describe, uh, uh, fully describe the, 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 the upper level. And again, you can do a, a similar trick using the interpolation and, and with the details get the, the next one and the next one. And in the end, you get this set of, of, of details and, and initial uh, samples. And the, the idea is that uh, this very simple scheme can, can, can help you do first uh, represent the original signal in a very compact way. And also to obtain a, a, some, some local analysis. You, you can look at the details and you can infer a, properties of the original signal just by looking at the signals. So this is how it looks like in a more uh, a rigorous uh, uh, form. So basically you can think about this pyramid transform as, as is looking at the sequence at some high resolution, J. And, and then you look at the very low resolution C0. This is like the very uh, low level, very down sampled uh, version of the signal. And then the details that together uh, defines the, the original sequence in full. Okay, so this is how you downsampled and then this is how you construct the details. This is the analysis and the synthesis is, is using the subdivision operator. So all you need here is, is so not subdivision, interpolation operator. All you need here is, is interpolation operator and, 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 and down, a very naive downsampled, uh, downsampling operator. And, and uh, I, I, I refer to, to this S as a subdivision operator because it turns out that interpolatory subdivisions are like very natural uh, choice of interpolation operator in this scheme. And in fact, it brings this, this, this Fermi transform very, very close to, to, to wavelet transform. And, and basically the interpolation, and sorry, there's a typo here, but, but the interpolation uh, uh, keeps everything very simple. The problem is that when you observe data in real life, you usually, you usually don't want to use interpolation. Usually the data is corrupted by noise from all sorts of, of source and, and interpolation will preserve stuff that you maybe want to get rid of. And, and, and specifically in many, many, uh, in many, many places and in applications, we, we used to, to work it with approximation operators that do not uh, uh, satisfy the interpolation. So BISC lines, for example. Um, so how can we use non-interpolatory operators? Um, we have to come up with, 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 with a new operators that kind of, uh, helps us to resemble the way that interpolation acts on this, on this pyramid. The interpolation allows us to keep details from 
very decreasing, rapidly decreasing size. So, so you keep like the details are going down very quickly. So, so it's very, um, very efficient in terms of compression. So then it, to, to, to make it again with, with non-interpolatory operators, you need a decimation operator that annihilates the, uh, the, the, the in-between samples. And interestingly, only recently, such a decimation operator was discovered for subdivision scales. So here what we do in, in a very high level, and I will show a few, a few uh, numerical examples in, in shortly. So, so it, uh, now what we're doing, we are picking the favorite approximation operator, such as B-spline or maybe something else. The B-spline can, can be posed as a as, as subdivision operator. And, and then we construct the corresponding estimation operator. At this point, there are some uh, adjustment and adaptation need, needs to take place. And basically, we need to fit the estimation for uh, to, to actually compute it because at the moment the estimation is only is more theoretical uh, object. Uh, so so this is the one uh, contribution that, that we made. And 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 the second is to take those those couple the, the a subdivision operator and the new estimation operator and to adapt it to manifold values. And, 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 and of course, all the theory behind it. So since I, I lack of time, I will go straight to the numerical examples. And here, for example, uh, uh, some original curve. And, and if we sample it with noise, we can by, by discard the last two layers, um, we, we can get a much, uh, a, smooth uh, denoised uh, uh, curves with, with some other uh, interesting examples of denoising too. And interestingly is the decay of the details coefficients. And this is something that we actually proved that, that, that using our pyramid scheme, the details coefficient decay, and it, it, it also decay with, with, and carry some information as I stated before. So here is another example, a time series of, of, of SPD matrices. And, and, and from the details, you can actually, you can actually uh, 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 assign some smoothness properties for, for the series and actually to, to, to uh, uh, detect uh, anomaly and, and, and other stuff like jump discontinuity and stuff like that, that, that actually for, for matrix valued functions are not, not easy, are not trivial. Um, I, 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 I left only with something like two minutes. So I'll go very briefly on the, on, on the second study case. And this is the, 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 the scattered data. So, so, so the curves let us say, uh, uh, gives us a very, now nice uh, atmosphere for, for, for uh, proving stuff. But, but, but in real world, what we get usually is, is scattered data, data either on a grid uh, or, or really scattered. Um, so, so these are two examples on the, on the left, you can see diffusion MRA. It's, it's basically scans of, your, of, of the brain and, and each point, uh, is defined by a certain tensor, which is actually a positive definite matrix. So we have a grid of positive definite matrices. What you see here is these blobs are basically those matrices. Uh, you have a one-to-one -one, uh, map between uh, SPD matrix and, 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 and a center ellipsoid. So this is basically ellipsoid. And uh, on the other side, it's, it's, it's a very uh, important uh, direction or field of research. It's called the parametric model reduction or reduced order models. And this is a way to simulate a very complicated uh, structure such as uh, in this case, airplane, but, but also your heart, for example, how, how it operates. 
And, and it turns out that it boils down to, to some scattered data approximation. Um, uh, here I have this, this definition. I, I'm not going to, to move it, to, 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 to read it out loud, but, but basically the difference is, is that the parametric space is no longer one dimensional and, and, and the samples might be scattered. And, and, and again, uh, this is a, a, a work that uh, jointly with, with one of my students. And um, since I'm really out of time, I'm going to just jump into some, some uh, uh, examples. This is examples on, 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 on real functions. And we kind of try to see if we can beat, uh, we, we took some approximation operator and we made it multi-scale uh, and, and, and we want to see if the multi-scale approach actually helps us. And, and what you see below the, 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 the function itself are graphs that uh, states the error decay of uh, either taking the approximation operators, uh, in this case, rather basis functions uh, as is, uh, or take it in, in a multi-scale fashion using our multi-scale uh, algorithm. And what we see and, and actually can prove that we gain uh, an advantage. You, if one hands to me a good approximation operator, I can make it even better. And, 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 and even more interestingly is we can do it for many faults. So taking this, we, we design the multi-scale in, in a way that can be adapted to many fold values and here are two simple examples of grids over SO3 and over SPD3. And, and, and we obtain the same error decay. It, it means that we can, uh, we can get better operators from the multi-scale approach. And I think at this point I will stop. Thank you very much, Nea. That was very interesting. So we have a question posted in the chat box by T.S. Parr. Could you explain the notion, the regularity of the value function? The, the regularity, oh, okay. So um, um, basically, the, the, the first challenge is in, in, in terms of regularity in the operators that we, that we do is to uh, uh, prove convergence. Uh, so uh, in the, the way we do it, we define, um, we use geodesics and we define the piecewise geodesic uh, curves and we uh, look at, 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 at the limits of the of these piecewise geodesic curves and, and and to see if it if 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 it makes a, a, if it converges to to, to a continuous a, a limit and and then with with the the, the 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 higher smoothness it's a bit more tricky um, but but we have like a very solid way to define like c1 uh, limits and C2 limits and so on. Um, I hope that I answered the, the question, but if not, please ask again. Do we have any other comments or questions for Neil? If not, uh, you can ask questions uh, you can post questions on Slack, of course. If not, let's thank Neil Sharon for uh, this interesting 